I understand completely the exasperation of people that four and a half years after the Brexit referendum were still debating this subject. And I understand the desire to move on. And I also accept the proposition that a thin deal is better than no deal. But this is not only a thin deal, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's a bad deal. And a far better deal could and should have been negotiated by the government and still could be. In nearly 20 years that I've spent uh, in this House, 15 of them on the front bench, there have been many occasions where I've voted for a proposition with reservations. That's the nature of parliamentary uh, and party politics. But there are occasions where um, that proposition is too damaging to support. I accept there's a valid argument uh, at this stage, as laid out by my right honourable friend, the leader of the opposition, to move on uh, and for the opposition to build on this bad deal. I also accept that in politics, many decisions, perhaps most, are not between what's right and what's clearly identifiable as wrong, but on a continuum between what's unpalatable and what's unacceptable. Clearly, no deal is unacceptable. This bad deal is certainly unpalatable and in places unacceptable because of the ideological approach taken to negotiations by this awful right-wing shambles of a Tory government determined to set Britain on a path that will damage it culturally and economically. So while I understand the desire to move on, I simply don't understand uh, why it's necessary for those who believe this is a bad deal to vote for it and dip their fingertips in the indelible ink of this abject failure of national ambition. The deadline we're up against today is an entirely artificial one, sustained only so that the Prime Minister can say he has met his own political timetable. The truth is that the transition period could have been extended or the deal could have been introduced on a provisional basis to allow this House to thoroughly scrutinise it line by line rather than follow the take it or leave it by lunchtime timetable that the government has artificially manufactured today. My right honourable friend uh, was right to talk about the red tape for manufacturing in this deal, checks for farmers, burdensome regulation on businesses, and that the consequences of the deal will be economically damaging. In addition, the government have chosen to end the Erasmus educational programme for young people. There's no proper recognition for professional qualifications, and it will remove work permit free access across the EU for touring musicians who've already been unable to work for the last year due to COVID. Just in the last few days, that issue alone has triggered a petition to Parliament of over 200,000 signatures. And less than a year ago, the DCMS minister, the member for Selby and Anstey at the time said in Westminster Hall uh, that it's absolutely essential that free movement for artists is protected post 2020. That's just one example of the failure of the government to deliver even on its own woefully inadequate promises in relation to this deal. This is a thin deal. It's a failure even on the government's own terms. In short, it's a bad deal and I won't be voting for it.